Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of sine 4x times e raised to the tan squared x dx. This was requested, sent in by a loyal subscriber. So if you want to pause the video and try it on your own, I'll give you a hint. You need to definitely use some trig identities here, but somewhat unconventional ones. And then we're going to make a substitution with the exponent here. Okay, so to kick things off, the minute I looked at this and I saw that we had sine 4x and that the argument on this trig function didn't match the argument of the trig function and the exponent, my mind said, okay, we're going to need to use our double angle identities. So remember, sine of 4x is the same as sine of 2 times 2x. So can, we can rewrite that as 2 sine 2x cosine 2x. But then we're going to need to keep going further because still the argument's not matching, right? And this is where things kind of take a spicy little turn because we end up using somewhat unpopular versions of those double angle identities. Okay, so for now we have 2 sine 2x cosine 2x times e raised to the tan squared x dx. All right, good. Now, I'll be honest, when I first played around with it, I just used good old 2 sine x cosine x. I replaced this with cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Things were going nowhere fast. So then kind of took a turn and said, all right, if we're going to make that substitution, if we're going to go ahead and let t be tan squared x, let me see what sort of terms I want in the rest of my integral so that that substitution could work out. So remember, tan squared x is tangent of x squared. So when we find dt, we have to use power rule and chain rule. This is going to be 2 times tan x times secant squared x dx. And so this kind of leads me to try to come up with double angles that only involve maybe tan squared or tangents instead of the normal ones that we use. Okay, so let's play with that right now. So a little aside moment in case you're not familiar with them. We know usually our double angle for sine 2x that we revert to is 2 sine x cosine x, right? But if I want one that's going to involve tangent, then you go to yourself, okay, to make this tangent, I would need to divide by cosine. But obviously we can't just like willy-nilly go dividing things by cosine. I'm going to multiply by cosine as well. That way I've just multiplied by 1. Nothing illegal has occurred. And then here now, okay, this is tangent x. And then this is cosine squared x, right? Okay, 2 tan x cosine squared x. But then cosine squared x, remember my goal is to just get everything in terms of tangents or tangent squared if possible. I can rewrite it as secant squared x in the denominator. And then using our Pythagorean identity, secant squared x, I can replace with 1 plus tan squared x. Okay, so save that. That's on the back burner. We're going to come in and replace sine 2x with this in just a moment. Let me do the same thing now with cosine 2x. So probably the double angle identity that you use the most is the one I think of the most, cosine squared x minus sine squared x, right? And then think to yourself, okay, the goal again is I want all tangents. So to make this tangent, well, it's sine squared, so I would have to divide by cosine squared. So we'll do that. We'll multiply basically by cosine squared x top and bottom. So then I'm going to distribute the cosine squared x that's in the denominator. So then I'll have 1 minus tangent squared x times cosine squared x. And then again, do the same thing. Flip that cosine squared x to the denominator. And then who does it become? Good. Secant squared x. And then secant squared x, I can replace with 1 plus tan squared x. So now I'm in a pretty good place because look, remember I told you we were going to try to use that substitution of let t be tan squared x? Well, this is perfect. This will be 1 plus t, 1 minus t, 1 plus t. And then don't freak out that we have this 2 tan x. It's actually great because dx is 2 tan x secant squared x dx. So we'll fix that in just a second. But already we're on our way to making the substitution work out in the integral. Okay. So we have, let's put it all together. 
integral. Let me write it all in terms of the tangents and stuff. So 2, instead of sine 2x, I'm going to put 2 tan x over 1 plus tan squared x. And then instead of cosine 2x, we have 1 minus tan squared x over 1 plus tan squared x. And then we still have that e to the tan squared x dx sitting there. Good? Okay, so this was sine 2x, this was cosine 2x. Now let's revisit the substitution that we're making. t is going to be tan squared x, so then this is going to be t, this is t, this is t, this is t. dt, do you remember what dt was? 2 tan x secant squared x dx. Almost perfect. Here's 2 tan x dx. 2 tan x dx. What do I not want? That secant squared x. So I'm going to divide by it. So dt over secant squared x is 2 tan x dx. Can I somehow rewrite this in terms of t? Yes, because secant squared x is very good. 1 plus tan squared x. Ooh, okay, and that equals 2 tan x dx, and remember tan squared x is t, so dt over 1 plus t is 2 tan x dx. So basically now, this 2 tan x dx is going to get replaced with dt over 1 plus t, and then now we can rewrite this whole integral in terms of t. Here we go. So we've got 2, this is going to become dt over 1 plus t, but right now I just have 1 over 1 plus t times 1 minus t over 1 plus t e to the t, and then 2 tan x dx is dt over 1 plus t. How are we doing? Okay, notice now we've got 1 plus t three times in the denominator. So let me put those together. So we've got integral, let's put the two outside. 1 minus t up top, 1 plus t cubed, and then e to the t dt. Whew, okay. Part one is done. <laughs> now I view it as like, now we have this rational function and exponential function. So I already am thinking probably by parts, but if you just try it right now, it doesn't get anywhere good. So we have to do some sort of clever manipulation. And what I did was break it up, break up this rational function into two terms, okay? So what I wanted to do first was try to get it to match the denominator a little better. So I'm gonna reverse the order of subtraction in the numerator. I'm gonna make this t minus one, and that changes the sign. So I'm gonna add a negative out here to compensate. So this is now negative two over t minus one over, let's write this as t plus one cubed, same thing, e to the t dt. Okay, and then from here, just to break it up into two terms, I'm going to, I want a t plus one up top. So if I'm going to have t plus one, then I have to subtract one. So then I'll end up with t minus two as well. So then we have t plus one minus two, right? Now that's still t minus one. Nothing illegal has occurred. The math police cannot come for me over t plus one cubed e to the t dt. And then from here, we'll break it up into two terms. So we have negative two integral, t plus one over t plus one cubed minus two over t plus one cubed. All of this is times e to the t dt. Are we okay? I hope nobody's crying. All right, then from here, look, this t plus one cancels and then we have t plus one squared. So then this is negative two times the integral, one over t plus one squared minus two over t plus one cubed times e to the t dt, okay? Now from here, there's two different ways to proceed. I'll show you both. <laughs> so 
the first thing I was thinking was, okay, we're going to need to do integration by parts, but let me distribute E to the T and I'll tackle each of them separately. So I rewrote it as negative two times integral one over T plus one squared E to the T dt minus integral two over t plus one cubed e to the t dt, okay? And I just set up to do integration by parts on this first one only right here. So let's go ahead. U is gonna be the function one over t plus one squared, which let me just rewrite it right now as t plus one to the negative second. And then dv will be e to the t dt. So now let's find du and v. So du is going to be negative 2 t plus 1 to the negative third dt. And then v is just e to the t. Don't set up the integration by parts for this second guy. Watch, something magical is going to happen. So we still have that negative 2 sitting outside. Now we will have uv. So uv is going to be this product right here. Let me just write it as e to the t over t plus 1 squared. Then we have minus integral v du, which is going to end up being positive, right? 2 e to the t over t plus 1 cubed dt. That's my whole first integral. But then look who's sitting there minus this guy, let me bring it down, minus integral 2 over t plus 1 cubed e to the t dt. <gasps> Do you notice something? These are the exact same integral. Oh my goodness, one's positive, one's negative. Yes, that means they just go bye-bye. <laughs> they cancel out <laughs> and we're done. So, I'll show you why exactly that worked out so beautifully in just a second. There's a faster way of doing that. The only awkward part is, like, now we have our antiderivative. Yeah, it's just this, but we have to remember to put plus C, okay? Yeah, so then we're left with negative 2 e to the t over t plus 1 squared plus C. Okay, this isn't done because we have to go back, replace t with tan squared x, but for the most part, the worst is over. Now, let me show you the other method, which explains why this cancellation occurred so beautifully, okay? And it's a little harder to spot right off the bat. Once you see it, though, it's so slick. So I did want to tell you. So here's the alternate method from that, picking back up from that earlier step that we were at. So I'll rewrite it. We have negative two, it was integral one over t plus one squared minus two over t plus one cubed e to the t dt. And here's something, if you notice it, it's fabulous. So this right here, let's call it f of t, it's t plus one to the negative second. And then this second term right here is actually f prime of t. Yeah, take the derivative of this function. It's negative two t plus one to the negative third. And these are both being multiplied by e to the t. That's actually the product rule being applied to f of t times e to the t, the derivative, watch. If we take the derivative with respect to t for some arbitrary function f of t times e to the t, what does the product rule tell me to do? I take the derivative of f, I leave e to the t alone, so f prime times e to the t plus, then you would leave f alone, and derivative of e to the t is e to the t. And if I factor out e to the t, then I'm just left with f prime plus f, which is the same as f, f plus f prime e to the t. So what does that tell me? Well, here I have f plus f prime times e to the t, which I can write as the derivative of f times e to the t. So leave that negative two out. I have integral. 
I'm going to replace the integrand with the derivative of f of t, which is t plus 1 to the negative second times e to the t, and then dt. So basically all of this can be replaced with this expression here, the derivative of t plus 1 to the negative second times e to the t. That might be hard to spot. Okay, so you go, oh, the product rule was applied to this function times e to the t. Why is this so slick? Well, now think about what we're doing. We have a derivative, and then we're asked to find its antiderivative with respect to the same variable t. And we know from our fundamental theorem of calculus, right, that these are inverse operations. So basically, I mean, you could think of it like they cancel out, right? So you don't really do anything. The integral and the derivative undo one another. So we're just left with negative 2 t plus 1 to the negative second times e to the t plus c, which we can rewrite as negative 2 e to the t over t plus 1 squared plus c. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so now let's go back to the original integral. We had made that substitution. Do you remember what it was? It might feel like a lifetime ago. We let t equal tangent squared x. So then now we have negative 2e to the tan squared x over, this is going to be tan squared x plus 1 squared plus c. Can we clean it up further? Yeah, because tan squared x plus 1, that's secant squared x. So negative 2e to the tan squared x over secant squared x squared plus c. So then that's secant to the fourth. And then I would just bring it up to the numerator because, it, you know, why is it in the denominator? So sad. Negative 2 cosine to the fourth x times e to the tan squared x plus c. And we are done. Voila. Box that with pride. I mean, this was an epic journey. Oh my God, why is it not boxing? Please get it together. There we go. Third time's a charm. I have to be honest though, like this integral took me on a journey. It took me, a, <laughs> it took some twists and turns and I went down some wrong paths until I finally got there. And I did consult with my mother on one part with the integration by parts moment and the lovely canceling out. We had a fantastic discussion about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is definitely really spice level, I think 10, you know, woo. And thank you for sending it in. I love learning new integration techniques and challenging my mind and sharing it with you guys. So I hope you enjoy it too. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below. What was your favorite part? What was the most difficult part? I'm curious to see what you have to say. And